Hey, I'm back and we're ready to move into Vector 2's, uh, which is just a point in space. Uh, my amazing drawing skills, we have X and Y. So this point here would be our Vector 2 of, I don't know, 1 and 1. Here's 1 and here's 1. And here's half. And here's half of that. Alright, so we have our Vector 2 here. So that's basically all we're doing for Vector2, which works perfect in screen coordinates and uh, definitely works perfect inside of Canvas uh, for HTML5 and JavaScript. So without further ado, we will start on our Vector2. So we'll begin with our Vector2 equal to function. And we're going to take in an X and a Y. So uh, you can imagine this is going to have a this dot X is equal to zero, this dot Y is equal to zero. Then we're going to say if uh, X is not equal to null, then this dot X is equal to X. And if uh, Y is not equal to null, this dot Y is equal to Y. So that's how we can do our initialization. We're going to put a couple more functions in here that I find that I use every now and then and help uh, a lot. So we'll make a this dot previous x is equal to zero. This dot previous y is equal to zero. This the previous is helpful for things like cameras. Whenever you want to get its last position and its current position uh, compared to the mouse, I guess to pan cameras around and move them and it, rather than writing two vector twos and comparing them it's a lot easier to just write some functions that use the previous y and uh, previous x uh, compared to the x and y so we'll also have to make an accompanying uh, set function so we can set the x and y we can set it directly, but if we use the set function, it'll also set our previous x and y. So we'll pass in an x and y in there. And we want to say if x is, we'll do an error checking first. If x is equal to null um, and y is equal to null, then nothing was passed into the set. And we can write to ourselves uh, console.log um, no x or y has been passed to vector2 two, uh, vector two's set function. Okay, otherwise uh, we're gonna check to make, so uh, we gotta check if x is not equal to null then we're gonna set this dot previous x equal to this uh, equal to this dot x and this dot previous y equal to this dot y order of operations we gotta set the previous before we set the current so this dot x is equal to x uh, actually let's take this y out I don't know what I was thinking uh, having it instead of this x is null and then we want to do an if uh, y is not equal to null and do the, the same exact thing this dot y equals y. So now we set our x and our y as well as our previous x and our previous y. Um, in fact, uh, to make this cleaner, I guess, we can, we would actually want to bring this out side of those just to be consistent. So there we have our set function. Now we can set our vector to uh, the next thing that we're, I want to go on to uh, is the normalize function. This is hugely important in uh, determining angles and fun stuff like that, especially with vector 3s in 3D. So if we do vector 3s or you do uh, use vector 3s in the future, you're going to see how important normalizing is. So we'll just make a uh, this.normalize. Yes, normalize is equal to function said functio. I wonder if I have a functio in here. I did. 
do. Look at that, I spelled it wrong. There we go. All right, so it's equal to function. And we don't need to pass a variable, but we do want to return one. So rather than permanently changing this one's x and y, we're going to return a, uh, a temporary one uh, that we can store and use. So we can say var tmp is equal to vector2, or say new vector2. Uh, tmp, oh, let's pass in uh, this.x and this.y, so it has the same x and y. And now what you uh, have to do is get the magnitude between the x and the y. So uh, we'd say var mag is equal to the uh, math dot square root. Let's say you do square square yes. And then we want to do this dot x. Oh no no no. We want to do temp dot x. Tmp dot x multiplied by tmp dot x. So multiply by itself, added by tmp dot y, multiplied by tmp dot y. And if you were doing a vector 3, you would just add the uh, tmp dot z and multiply by itself as well. So now we have our magnitude. We're ready to set the normalization, which uh, you set them separately. So tmp dot x is equal to tmp dot x divided by the magnitude. Um, and you do the same for y, so let's just duplicate it and put y here. And then we can return tmp. And there we go, that's our normalized function. Um, now let's do our distance. So our distance function will check a passed in vector 2 and uh, get its distance between between get the distance between these two vector twos or if nothing is passed then it will get the distance between the previous and the current so we can say this dot distance is equal to function we're going to pass in a vec2 and now we can uh, just go ahead and do uh, if vec2 is not equal to null else uh, we can actually get rid of these because we do it in one line we return and if you think about it the distance if you take in two right triangles which basically is what it is you have one x and y coordinate and another x and y coordinate what they are are basically right triangles right they're just right triangles um, x and y basically so if we do the distance between them, let me just undo this. So we have two coordinates. We link them by going across the x and down the y. And we have a right triangle, basically. Do, do, do. Oh, that's a terrible. I know there's a line tool, but whatever. So we have our A and our B and our C. So those of you who know or remember your geometry, uh, we can get the hypotenuse of this triangle by using the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in order to do that in the code, we want to take the math dot square root, what is it, sqrt. They want to take the square root. It almost looks like the uh, magnitude, really. Um, so you want to take in the square root of uh, what would be the a squared which is this dot x multiplied by this dot x plus uh, this dot y this dot y multiplied by this dot y so uh, a squared which is x times x plus b squared which is y times y is equal to c squared and to get rid of the square roots on both sides you are the squares on both sides you just square root this and you'll get your c so uh, we'll do the same thing for previous uh, um, this doesn't look right because it is not right <laughs> so you want to add the uh, the two together so or subtract the distance between the x's so this one's x subtracted by vec2.x 
multiplied by this dot x subtracted by the vec2 dot x. Yes, uh, that is because, of course, the um, this one's x is, let's say, 5. Yeah, that's a 5, by the way. So this one's x is 5, and this one is 10. Um, actually, let's invert that, yeah. So we want to say, actually, uh, vec2 minus this is x. All right, so uh, we take in the second x, which is 10, minus 5 equals 5. So 5 multiplied by itself. We know that the distance between these two is 5 because 10 minus 5 is now uh, 5. And if this one happened to be on the other side, uh, it would be negative 5, so it would be pretty much the same. We know a negative times a negative equals a positive. So either way, it's going to be 25 on, uh, when you do a squared. So. Um, now we do the same thing on y. Uh, let's keep the same convention. Back to dot y plus this dot y. Sorry, minus. Minus this. And I might actually want to invert this because unlike the real world where y is up, inside of uh, the screen, x actually counts down. As we know, this is 0 and this is 10 on the screen space. So we really want to subtract the first one by the second one so that it is uh, equal to, is really truly equal to uh, this part over here having the larger number subtracted by the smaller. In actuality, it doesn't really matter. I just, I always get anxious when things are all mixed up, <laughs> so. And when you come back to read it, you're not going to look at this and be like, oh, Pythagorean theorem. And so it doesn't matter which way they go. You ju you're just going to look at it and be like, why did I make these all crazy? So, um, yes, yeah, so same thing, except we're going to do uh, this dot previous x um, same thing previous y same thing into the second one and this video is getting pretty long so we'll cover the next couple functions um, which is going to be has changed in difference uh, in the next video. So uh, sorry for the confusion. I've been going back and forth, but hopefully I explained it well. Um, if I didn't, just let me know in the comments and I will make sure I re-explain it. So thanks.